Chapter 5, The Innocent Captive Mayo Kolo Another day passed, and nobody came to visit me. Whenever there were sounds of footsteps, I got up from my bunk and waited hopefully for whoever could have entered the dungeons. Nobody who knew me came. They were all a bunch of thieves, assassins, and criminals that the soldiers captured during their daily rounds. There was no sign of rescue. My stomach growled, and I instantly knew that it was night time. My body had a funny way of keeping me aware of time. For some reason, it growls once to remind me of breakfast, twice to remind me of lunch, and thrice to remind me of dinner. It was almost crazy. The footsteps became louder. Kolo, a man sat outside my cell. Food, he said. The tin plate was pushed under my cell door, and I stared at the food gloomily. There was burnt rice and burnt bread. Nothing else. At this rate, even if I could break free from this cell, I would find myself lying helplessly outside from lack of nourishment. How could the soldiers believe that the food they gave the prisoners was enough to sustain our health? I stood up and took the food as there was no sense in complaining. The food tasted horrible, but what could I expect? I was held a prisoner here, of course, everything they feed us here would taste vile. The soldier stayed outside the way he usually did. Hey, I said. What's your name? The soldier looked at me, surprised. Are you talking to me? No. I was talking to the rat over there, I said innocently before continuing, of course, I'm talking to you. You know who I am. It's only right I should know your name, too. I'm Lomer Suman, the soldier said before turning his back against me. I gobbled a spoonful of rice and chewed on the burnt bread. They tasted ghastly. Will you tell me what's going on outside? I asked. He shrugged and ignored me. Come on, I said. There's nothing here to occupy me. I don't even know why I am being kept here. The soldier glanced at me from the corner of his eyes. Everybody says you're a killer. I coughed and spat out most of the bread I had so successfully, skillfully chomped with my bare teeth. I seriously thought that chewing on this burnt bread was an impossible feat. I am not. I said. Who said that? Does it matter? Lomer asked. All I know is that you must be kept inside for being a dangerous boy. Someone who killed people in Sinista. He shuddered as though he had been to that evil place. That's crazy. Look at me. Do you think that's true? I yelled. Don't raise your voice, he said, panicked. I was informed not to taunt you, or you might unleash your power. What power? This was by far the most horrific conversation I ever had. The general himself said that you were with a witch and that your lot can kill people without even touching anyone, he said. That wasn't me. I said. That was crazy Miro and his power. Even though I didn't know where he was, I wanted to smack him in the head for being a liar and a murderer. And for bringing me trouble even though he wasn't here with me. Are you done? The soldier asked, eyeing my plate that was still half filled with burnt rice. I pushed the plate towards him. Here. Nothing tastes good anyway. I stood up slowly, shoulders sagging, and laid on my bunk. Would I ever get the chance to escape prison? If the soldiers were told to keep a tight lid on my security, then perhaps not. I had no idea how long I could manage to stay here in the dark, dingy cell with nothing decent to eat without losing my mind. The plate scraped against the floor as Lomer pulled it from outside the cell. I'm sorry, he said. Then, his footsteps softened as he went away. When dawn approached, I was still in the same position as when Lomer left. While it was true that back in Wawang village, I barely got up when school was over, now, inside the cell where I could procrastinate all day long, I had every desire to get up and do stuff, it didn't matter what, as long as I could pace beyond these four walls that surrounded me. I turned away from the wall when the right side of my shoulder went numb from not moving, but I stayed lying on the bunk. There was no sense in getting up. If I could only find a way to escape and get a hold of the registry of citizens, that would be awesome. At least something would keep me occupied while outside. Kino and Piper could be having the time of their lives. 
I felt a sour taste in the pit of my stomach. Why wouldn't my friends rescue me? When it was Kino who was taken, Piper, Arden, and I all went to find him. Did no one care for me? With that thought and tears starting to streak down my lopsided cheeks, I fell asleep. Mm-hmm.